Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's What I Eat in a Day review is sponsored by Bilt Bar, and we'll be looking at another Harper's Bazaar Food Diaries video from Lana Condor. But before I get into it, I want to chat about my sponsor, Bilt Bar. So if you're a regular Abby's Kitchen fan here, you've been watching me work through this box of Bilt Bars each week. Now, I'm not usually a fan of protein bars because I think most of them taste like chalk, but these taste legit like a chocolate bar filled with a marshmallow. They're so good. So far, I'd say my favorite flavor has been cookies and cream, but today we're gonna try something new. Let's take a look-see. Mm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the candy cane brownie. Fun. All right, this one's got 17 grams of protein. Oh, little candy cane bits on top. Mm. If you love that classic holiday chocolate and peppermint candy cane flavor, you're gonna love this so much. Um, like I said, 17 grams of protein, so it's great if you're trying to bump up the protein in a meal or in a snack. And if I was using this as a post-workout snack, I would probably pair this with like a piece of fruit or some toast for muscle repair since it is a lower sugar snack. And I know you guys were loving what I said about the zero guilt message on the label. And I'm gonna revise that statement to say that unless you've stolen it from a baby or a very hungry breastfeeding mama, all foods should be zero guilt. Anyways, if you want to try them out, I'm gonna leave a link below for 20% off of your order. Also, you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning for those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. A reminder that this format follows a celebrity's description of what they eat and ultimately tells me very little about its accuracy, portions, brands, cooking preparation, etc. not to mention their overall relationship with food. So take this more as general education to the masses, not so much as specific recommendations to Lana. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on a episode. All right, lovelies, let's get in there. So I eat a lot, just in general, a huge amounts of food. I have always been this way ever since I was little, and I also am not the type of person that can eat the same thing every day. Oh gosh, I love her. But also, she's just like too pretty for words. Um, I'm getting sidetracked here by my little girl crush. Gotta focus. Focus on the food. All right, let's hear it green tea with antioxidants. And I am a coffee drinker while I'm working, but if I'm not working, tea is the way to go. I, I, like, I literally can't even speak unless I have my morning tea. So you guys know I never critique people's coffee or tea orders, um, but I would say it actually makes probably more sense to me to go with the tea on days that you're working if you're looking to get like a little boost in energy levels without a crash midday at work. While green tea does have caffeine in it, it also contains a powerful antioxidant called L-theanine, which research suggests may help promote better focus, alertness, attention, and sharpness, which are all things that you would probably want as a busy actress on set. But again, I'm not gonna mess with her coffee or tea routine. And then it's breakfast time! Breakfast time is my favorite time! <gasps> Lunchtime is also my favorite time, and dinner time is my favorite time. This girl is me. Now I'm like super pumped to see what she's gonna eat. But it's scrambled eggs with a little tiny bit of tomato sauce, um, and then Morning Star veggie breakfast links cut up and put into the scramble. That does sound legit amazing to me. It kind of sounds slightly like shukshuka, but with a higher egg to tomato sauce ratio, I guess. Um, but regardless, tomatoes and eggs are BFFs. So I think she's on something. And then I'll we'll typically do avocado with some olive oil drizzled over and um, a crack of uh, salt 
and everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's, which is my jam, and I carry it in my purse when I'm working. That's it. That's it. This woman stole my identity. Call the cops. This is freaking me out. Identity theft is not a joke. Okay, so I don't actually carry the bagel seasoning in my purse while working because <laughs> I don't leave the house and I don't think I've packed a purse in like a whole year. Hashtag COVID life. But if I did leave the house and I did pack a purse, I would put my everything but the bagel seasoning inside it for sure. But anyways, this breakfast sounds like perfection. We've got loads of protein in the eggs and the veggie sausages, healthy fats in the avocado, carbs in the bread, and we've got some produce thrown in there for good measure. Nothing I would do differently here. Canada. I'm not much of a snacker. I'm more of an entreeer. Like why eat a snack when you can eat a full meal? I mean, that is a very good point. I guess the only answer to that question is that you're only hungry for a snack. But I am here for this girl's appetite. But if I do snack, I'll snack on canned sardines or canned oysters. The canned sardines, I'll just put a, just a little extra crack of Himalayan salt on it. And I'll just eat it right out of the tin. I have like some wheat thins with the oysters and I'll put like the oyster on the wheat thins and eat it. Okay, so this is where we diverge in palate. <laughs> I'm just kidding, girl. I'm not here to yuck your yum. Canned fish is not my style, but super nutritious for you. So it's definitely a choice I support. So both the canned sardines and oysters are packed with protein, iron, and omega-3s. Actually, sardines, in fact, are one of nature's best sources and also contain calcium and vitamin D. And I love the pairing of the wheat thins with the oysters for some carbs and fiber. So good. Sometimes I love sea salt and vinegar chips. Like I have to have sea salt and vinegar chips in my house, but I'm a weirdo because I only like to eat them when they're folded. So like when you get a chip that looks more like a taco, yes, that's, that's me. Interesting ritual, but it does kind of make sense. I mean, if we're thinking about the sensory experience of eating chips, the folded ones are more crispy, and I guess there's just like more texture to interact with. So it makes sense. I mean, now, if she was feeling like a more substantial snack, maybe pairing the chips with like a higher protein dip would be a good idea. But also, who the hell does that? Girl, you just straight up ate protein packed sardines, so I'ma let you eat your dang chips. Now, let's see what else she has for lunch. The thing that I eat a lot of the time during lunchtime is a poke bowl. And I'll get a scoop of salmon, a scoop of spicy tuna, spicy mayo tuna on it with edamame and furikake, and over a bed of a salad and a bed of rice. Tons and tons of seaweed salad. That sounds incredible. Um, we've got lots of protein and healthy fats in the tuna and salmon, plus the fiber and carbs from the salad and rice. I mean, this isn't like a low calorie or a low carb meal, but it's inherently nutrient dense and really well balanced. And most importantly, it sounds like it's something that she truly enjoys. And in my experience reviewing these Harper's Bazaar videos, that is sadly a beautiful, magical thing. I love that for lunch because I feel like it, it really fills me up without making me feel um, like sleepy. Yeah, like that makes sense to me. And that's because of the balance inherently built into these bowls. I know we often think about carbohydrates as being energizing, and they are, but research suggests that straight up sugar can actually reduce activity in unique cells called orexin cells, which contributes to exhaustion and fatigue. But if we pair those carbohydrates with a source of protein, we get more stable energy and levels of alertness. This also makes sense from a typical blood sugar regulation standpoint, because having a meal that is balanced in carbohydrates, protein, and fat will allow the carbohydrates to be digested and absorbed more slowly so you can enjoy their energizing benefits longer throughout the day. If I'm trying to be a healthy person, which is not often, I will eat a salad for lunch. But mind you, that salad will have like a ton of cheese on it and probably something pretty crispy. 
like a crouton, like 75% crouton, 25% salad. <laughs> So this is kind of why I typically avoid calling meals or foods out as being healthy, because we tend to associate the healthy food with like a lack of pleasure or enjoyment, which can result in us trying to kind of mask or cover up the offending healthy ingredients. I mean, tell a child that broccoli is good for them, it's probably gonna be a hard sell but tell a child that it's crunchy and green like their favorite dinosaur and looks like a baby tree. And suddenly like they're double fisting the stuff. Unbelievably, adults are not that different. Now, in all honesty, it does sound like Lana is kind of joking about the 75% crouton to salad ratio, but as a general observation, the poke meal, which she described with so much pleasure and gusto, was naturally produce packed and satisfying. There wasn't an underlying narrative of the meal needing to be healthy. It just kinda naturally was. But it was also something that she clearly craved and really loved. So then why can't salad be the same? Why not pack it full of flavorful, colorful ingredients that you love, like roasted sweet beets and tangy goat's cheese, crunchy fennel, juicy oranges, my mouth is watering. This is just what sounds really good to me right now. Um, but make a list of your favorite colorful foods and you do you. So I would say it's best not to think about needing to eat healthy when it's going to impair your enjoyment of that meal, as this typically does lead us on like a hunt for the foods that we actually want to eat. And in the process, we tend to overeat. So just make the damn salad taste good right out the gates and call it what it is. Not healthy, not guilt-free, not rabbit food, just a big ass bowl of ingredients that you actually want to eat. I'll have like an iced green tea with lunch to kind of keep my energy up through the day. Okay, cool, awesome. Lots of antioxidants there. So definitely always a nutritious beverage choice. So for dinner, I, without a doubt, we'll eat noodles. If I'm not um, on a diet uh, for my job or for anything. For dinner, some, my like go-to is I'll make spaghetti and homemade marinara sauce. And I will fry up some really amazing Italian chicken sausages, extra, extra virgin, very stinky olive oil over my pasta and then put some Pecorino Romano cheese on it. I like the stinkier cheese. And if I'm not doing that, I'll do like a bowl of ramen, udon with fish cakes and shrimp tempura, chow mein, you know, oh, I have a great fusilli a la vodka. And it always goes with a glass of wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc, like a, like a white. If I'm feeling feisty, I'll have a glass of a really nice red wine. Wow, 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 wow. I am suddenly super hungry and could totally go for a bowl of slurpy nudes right now. Mm. So I love how Lana doesn't discriminate between all the different varieties of noodles. Like she's got fusilli to udon, chow mein, ramen, spaghetti. I mean, she's given some love to noodles from literally around the world. So I first need to just say that I'm always thrilled to see someone in the media not demonizing carbs. Yes. Now she did make a comment that she eats noodles every day when she's not on a diet. And I do get that sometimes changing your body may just kind of be part and parcel of the job. That show business as messed up as it is. And if changing your body helps you settle into a character and land the role and it doesn't interfere with your long-term relationship with food, Cool, amazing. I mean, you do you. But for the average person, I do believe that if something is such a staple in your life and your diet, you should not attempt to cut it out in the name of weight loss. That is just asking for a food obsession or a binge. What I would suggest instead is enjoying your favorite noodle in moderation and then bulking it up with the fiber and nutrients found in extra veggies and also a source of protein. So zucchini noodles, spaghetti squash, butternut squash noodles, or even shredded cabbage can all stand beside the real deal, in addition to having, of course, a source of protein in there to help bump up the satiety factor of your nudes. 
gotta love them nudes, baby. After dinner, when I've gotten all ready for bed and I'm laying in bed, typically a bag of sea salt and vinegar chips, the kettle, sea salt and vinegar chips. I just I have them at the ready. I also have seaweed at the ready at all times. That's another snack that I just do all day long. Okay, so this girl likes her salty, crispy snacks. And while, yeah, obviously chips are a fun, sometimes food, which we've already discussed, those little seaweed snacks are actually also a really great way to get your crunchy fix. There's admittedly not a whole lot in them nutrient-wise, like no protein or fiber, and they're pretty low in fat as well but they are a lower sodium chip option with no saturated fat. So if you want to satisfy your crispy chip mouth hunger, you could totally do a modest portion of the chips supplemented by a portion of crispy seaweed snacks. Now that, that would be a pretty cool, fun bedtime snack. All right, so what can I say about our girl Lana? Honestly, it seems to me that Lana is a natural born intuitive eater. She seems to eat what she likes, she eats enough to satisfy her hunger, and she doesn't have insecurity around her appetite. For a woman in Hollywood perpetually engrossed in diet culture, I'm sure that that is no easy feat. It sounds like there are still times that she does need to diet, which I mean, probably just comes with the territory. I think it probably sucks to have to try to manipulate your body for a job, but that may be a sacrifice actors make for their craft. I thankfully cannot relate. But I also assume a lot of actors just see this as like a job requirement, not unlike, you know, like a course or a skill or a certification that you need. So it sounds like thankfully those work diets are not interfering with Lana's relationship with food and love of food, and to that, I gotta give the girl props. Her diet is also generally really well balanced with a very broad variety of nutritious proteins, healthy fats, energizing carbs, and lots of fiber rich fruits and veg. Not to mention she prefaced this interview with the reminder that she never eats the same thing twice. So that alone is really great evidence of the variety in her diet. And also any celebrity who talks about their body being stuffed full of noodles, is pretty damn cool in my books. So on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you have someone else that you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.